congregation is a move out of the vicinity of Audio Wing, where Paul just started building in buildings and forming structure. They began to call these buildings and the hierarchy of that group of people, the leaders, Korea Collins, churches. The translation for the Greek word Koreacon is church. So they were called churches, which it was a building or a group of people under a certain hierarchy. They are called Koreacons because, or, and the word was church, English word, because they belong to the Lord. Not a bad word, it's a good word. Church is a good word. When King James gave the order to translate the scriptures into English in 1611, he had 15 law rules for translating it. One of those rules was when he found the word ecclesia, he said, you cannot translate that as government or legislature. You have to use the word that translates Koreacon. You have to use the word church. Why did he do that? Because it was a threat to his kingdom. He did not want these people thinking like an ecclesia. He was okay with them being a family. Worshipping. He was religious himself. He was fine with all that. Just don't let this, so don't translate it in any way, shape, or form that can mean a legislature. In fact, take the word Koreacon and translate this church and put that word everywhere you find that to see the church. So we have our word church. Now I'm not trying, I'm not down on the word church. It's come to represent everything we love. So the church is not a bad word, and we do belong to the Lord. My point is, Satan's strategy to steal from us the concept that we are the called out assembly legislature of God in the earth. We are not just his family. And Jesus did not just restore his family, he restored his managers or government on the earth. Fivefold plan and made the general or the government leaders. He, 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 that's a, he, he messed with the Bible, but he made the caregiver of the general and he stole from us the revelation of that we are the government of God. Now, The ramifications of this are devastating beyond our wildest dreams. Yeah. These these two things that he did affect everything we do. Yeah. Everything. It shaped all of our gatherings. Find all the ways that relate to one another. It's really stolen from us, our destiny as a people. Yeah. Oh. And now I'm going to give you a list of things very quickly. I'm going to be really quick. I'm probably going to do all of them. So here's one of the ways that he changed the meaning. Now this is this is really fascinating.
body of Christ started meeting in buildings and forming congregations and moved out. They were in the synagogue anywhere in Morton Hall to start meeting in buildings and forming structure. They began to call these buildings and the hierarchy of that group of people, the leaders, Koreacons, churches. The translation for the Greek word Koreacon is church. So they were called churches, which it was a building or a group of people under a certain hierarchy. They are called Koreacons because, or, and the word was church, the English word, because they belong to the Lord. Not a bad word, it's a good word. Church is a good word. When King James gave the order to translate scriptures into English in 1611, he had 15 law rules for translating it. One of those rules was when he found the word ecclesia, he said, you cannot translate that as government or legislature. You have to use the word that translates Koreacon. You have to use the word church. Why did he do that? Because it was a threat to his kingdom. He did not want these people thinking like an ecclesia. He was okay with them being a family, yeah. worshiping. He was religious himself. He was fine with all that. Just don't let us, so don't translate it in any way, shape, or form that can mean a legislature. In fact, take the word Koreacom. And trans this church and put that word everywhere you find that to see the church. So we got our word church. Now I'm not trying, I'm not down on the word church has come to represent everything we love. So church is not a bad word, and we do belong to the Lord. My point is Satan's strategy to steal from us the concept that we are. Called out assembly legislature of God in the earth. We are not just his family. And Jesus did not just restore his family, he restored his managers or government Amen. on the earth. Amen. The fivefold plan and made the general or the government leaders. He, 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 that's a, he, he messed with the Bible, but he made the carrier of the general, and he stole from us the revelation of the mirror of the government of God. Now, the ramifications of this are devastating beyond our wildest dreams. These, these two things that he did affect everything we do. Yeah. Everything. This shaped all of our gatherings. It's defined all the ways that we relate to one another. It's really stolen from us, our destiny. And I'm going to give you a list of things very quickly. I'll be really quick. I probably won't do all of them. Number three, this caused us to misdefine success. Success to the average Christian leader is the growth, numerical growth, of their ministry. Most, yeah. most, most, most people, That's right. most of them are pastors, but there's also people like me that don't pastor. But, you know, <clears throat> success should be, now watch, success based on what Christ said should be, are we extending kingdom culture into this region, making it look like heaven? 
to our definition of an ecclesia. Oh, I'm, I'm not anti-family, body, and fellowship, and love, and one another, so I'll explain that. Success should be the, the, the family of God is healthy, growing, and extending kingdom culture into the region. And if you are not extending kingdom culture into that region, making it look like Rome, I mean heaven, then you are not fulfilling the role of the ecclesia. What have we defined? How have we defined success? How big is your church, brother? Yeah. Yeah. We define success to it. Speed and size. Speed and size. Not function. And so since we became narcissistic and it's about mine and the part is more important than the whole, success became how many sheep can I get? It doesn't matter if they relocated from another sheep fold. Come on. I'm in the sheep relocation because that's how I succeed. Come on. Yeah. So in church growth conferences, sheep relocation conferences. Yeah. 90% of church growth in America in the last 30 years has been transferred. I'm not, by the way, I'm not against people. There, there is an appropriate time. It, at, at times, it is appropriate for a person to relocate into a different congregation. You know, if, you, if you're part of what you need and you're not being fit, or you're not attending a true ecclesia, you ought to find one. Amen. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying there's never an appropriate reason for going to different congregation. I'm talking about the phenomenon in America that now we grow intensely. We grow our congregation based on who can be innovative, the most, show the most innovation, have the best facilities or gifts or money, most money or whatever, and we're going to get the most sheep. Yeah. And we don't care where they come from. We're not trying to reach the lost and extend kingdom culture. We want the most sheep. And you can argue with me till you're blue in the face, but deep in your heart, you know that I'm telling you the truth. That is the culture of the body of Christ in America. Amen. Fourthly, this calls us to redefine our mission. So as leaders now, when we come together, the mission is not to be too full. We're going to love God and love one another, but we're also going to be equipped and we're going to be the army and that government of God. Since we're just doing the internal family oikos part of things, the mission becomes how do we best take care of the sheep? Yeah. Right? 90 percent, maybe more, 95, 99, who knows, percent of all activity in any local congress you ever go to, and the discussions with the staff, the, how the money is spent, how do, can we take care of these people? Why are you looking at me like this? <laughs> you know I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not saying we're not supposed to take care of each other. We are a family. Yeah. But yeah, there came a point in time when, when my daughters, I don't want to live in my house forever. <laughs> That's not because I want to get rid of them. I want them to get married, have a family of their own. I want them to be. I want them to be what they're supposed to be. Yeah, extend the thing. Get, go out there and conquer another neighborhood. <laughs> We redefine our mission is to meet the needs of one another, teach. And after all, in fact, whoever meets the needs of the sheep, whoever makes them feel the best and happiest, don't get the most sheep. Mm -hmm. yeah. and since success is who can have the most, yeah. then the way to succeed is to take care of these people the best. We don't even 
really think and see a change in the culture. So when guys would come to me and I'd be in pastor's gatherings, redefining success, how's your church doing? Why got they're all so sick of the playing the game? What they're trying to figure out, they're trying to measure me. Yeah. How many you got, you know? How many did you have Easter Sunday? <laughs> How big is your church? And I'd say, let's see, how's your church doing? I'd say, bad. <laughs> Good, what's wrong? Divorce, division, disunity, apathy, people won't read their Bibles, worship's awful, preaching's watered down. <laughs> How big is it? It's about 200,000. Yeah. He's lying. This guy's lying. He's messing with me. <laughs> so, oh, you mean my congregation? I thought you meant the ecclesia of my city. Come on. That's my church. That's how I define success. Not how many people do I have. I define success by are we extending the culture of the king into our region? How I many sheep can I get moving around? I said, we're not doing well. Yet the sea in Colorado Springs is not doing well. Oh, they just looked at me like they were talking to a foreigner. You know, like, that's crazy. I'll tell you the Lord defines us. Success and the ecclesia. Are we loving one another, loving Him? Yes. First commandment is love God, your heart, soul, mind, strength, family. Second commandment, neighbors. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you, He judges success. Is His kingdom coming to your region? That's right. Does it look like Rome? I mean, heaven. Yes. Is the divorce rate going down? Is vice crime going down? Is, it, is the education system being changed? Are the kids coming to Jesus? Is, is, the, is the drug activity decreasing? Is, is the gang violence decreasing? Is my kingdom rule coming to your region? If not, the church, your church is not successful. I'll just read them off. Number five. Is produced independent and competitive mindsets yeah. in the body of Christ. We don't have a problem competing and in being independent. In fact, the 50 people from your congregation this week show up in somebody else's house, and they're going to be wondering what's wrong, how's this going to affect the kingdom, they're going to be excited. That always goes over well. <laughs> Number six, this produced a consumer-oriented, customer-based approach to our members. Consumer-oriented, customer-based. We don't teach them stewardship, we make them consumers. Yeah. We don't take ownership along with us of the plan. It's who can offer me the most for least? We ought to call all of our congregations for a while on Sunday morning Walmarts. Yeah. Yeah. Who can give me the most for the least? Yeah. Put your greeters at the door and welcome them into Walmart. We have produced, you want to know the truth, we have produced a welfare church in America. That's right. What would that be? Somebody take it for me. Yeah. Yeah. Pray for me. Teach me. Give me my food. Let me meet my needs. Welfare in America. I guess we're all so tired of the same person who came up to me eight, ten weeks in a row when I was back from your favorite day. Your friend said, no. <laughs> Pray for you five, six, seven, eight weeks in a row. Pray for yourself. <laughs> you know that one. Over. 
go find a shepherd that loves me. This, of course, had to alter our message. Message had to change. It couldn't be a true gospel. Because even though it's the good news of the kingdom, it's also lay your lives down for the kingdom. Yeah. Take up your cross and follow me. Our message changed to a false gospel. No commitment needed. It's all about you. What's in it for you? You want to go to heaven when you die. And I don't want to take much of your time. In fact, we'll worship 15 minutes. I'll preach for 15 minutes. We're so good now we can get you in and out the door in 45 minutes. We are seeker sensitive. Not Jesus sensitive. Not training sensitive. Our whole goal is to build this place. Yeah, that goes over well too. If I require, but if I require anything of them, the consumers will go down the street and shop someplace else. So our message became innovative, no sound doctrine. Five Christ Americans, they don't have sound doctrine. Over half the people who call themselves born again Christians in America today don't even believe that this is the literal word of God. Yes, true. Over half. Mm -hmm. Barna says, leading expert on studying this sort of stuff. He says over 80% of the people that call themselves born again, evangelical Christians in America, do not have a biblical worldview. That's right. They don't even believe in the virgin birth. They don't believe in the literal Holy Spirit. Why? Because all they've gotten for the last 20, 30 years, especially in the last 10, is creating innovative teachings that make people happy and feel good about themselves. They don't want to come to hear doctrine. And if I try to give them truth and me, doctrine, rather than just a teaching to make them happier and more prosperous, if I really try to take them into the Word of God and give them some meat, they don't want that to go down the street and tell a better story. I feel so happy when I leave. It us to redefine all of our leader functions in their roles for the sheep, not the king and his kingdom. And my staff freaked out and I said, we're going to have to tweak the budget a little bit because we got a guy here that ministered on the streets all the time. He's a true evangelist. I've known him for years. He's reaching out to the drug guy, this and that one. He didn't have a congregation. He just, that's, he's, he does it. Well, so he travels, but I tell you, he's a street preaching machine. He's out there getting the job done. He's bringing people, people who didn't save their week. I said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to pay his salary. We're not going to give him one responsibility around here to take care of this congregation, to take care of the sheep. We're going to pay this man's salary and the insurance to get out there and reach the loss. Yeah. Yeah. He's our staff evangelist, if you want to call him that. That's all we did. <laughs> we're going to get the money. Well, we're probably all going to give some of our salary because the whole thing's messed up, so we're going to have to restructure it. Two people on my staff before I quit. I had two people on my staff that did nothing for that congregation. Their responsibilities they were paid by us. Their responsibilities were to do things out there. Should have been probably five or six by them. I was going to get to the point where two or three people would pray to take care, pay to take care of the sheep. And their message is extending kingdom. We're not so narcissistic anymore. Yeah. I would have had more, but she kept leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I really fed the relocation program the last two years, and I really started preaching this. When I first started preaching it, they all did the charismatic thing. Oh, he did so good. I said, it's never going to be about you again. him first and if he says take care of the people they just lay hands on that happened just lay hands on the sick all morning fine that's what you want that's what we do but if you say intercede travail you're going to do it I said it's never going to be about your needs first it's always going to be what he wants first Amen. Our, our leader he's our pastor he's so, he's so good until we started doing it and when they weren't 
aren't first anymore? Yeah. How come I just been worshiping for the last 90 days? God came and said, I want you to do 24-7 worship for the next 90 days. I don't want anything else done around here to worship. 24-7. People come and say, and you don't preach again. I don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> you buy some of my CDs, okay? You don't hear me preach? Come on, CDs. God said, worship. I got an attitude, and I know what I'm <laughs> And so when I started preaching that, with the first year I started preaching this and saying, we're going to be, we're going to be an ecclesia. We do not exist, an army doesn't exist to be healthy. An army has to be healthy. Four on the list, also probably, but it's got to be healthy. But an army doesn't exist to be healthy. It exists to kill and defend. A legislature doesn't exist. 500 to 400. And I turned over to somebody else while there was still something left to give <laughs> I'll tell you what, by the time I left, we had, we had weaned that thing down to an army. Yeah. 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 They didn't care what we did. Yeah. Yes. We came and said, God's telling us just to get on our faces for two hours, three hours here. Let's just pray. Come on, get up here. Let's get it. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. Uh, where are we? Number 12, we got two more real quick. This produced flocks, number 12. This produced flocks, not an army. Fellowships, not a government. Congregations, not a congress. Number 13, this is my last one. This shifted us from dominion to survival. From occupation to existence. 